Composing Gloves here, and today we are reviewing Trailer Expressions 3. Let's jump right into it. So to start us off, I've got here a small demo track. So let's dive into what's specifically going on here. So first up, we've got pattern one and it is just playing a drone. Now you can get to the WAV files themselves, but I was just goofing off with the MIDI and decided to just roll with it that way. This drone sounds like this. It's a drone. There's a whole bunch of just super great drones like this. So we're gonna take a look at some of these and then the second bit is these fractal textures. So let's go ahead and go over to pattern two and we'll solo this. And it sounds like this. So that is what's being played there. And then we have a second come in. These like little clicky poppy sounds in the background. And that is pretty much it for the atmosphere. So in this case, I'm just using it as a general atmosphere. Let's go ahead and dive into some of the other things it has to offer. Now you can get to the samples directly, which for a lot of these things kind of makes more sense. So for example, uh, we could come back to some of those atmosphere sounds, drag those in, and you can bring them in and adjust them, you know, with your DAWs capabilities right then and there. And you can, you know, just drop them in your project. So this would make a lot more sense for some things, right? So like these low hits, some people like to place the drums in like so, you know, that, that sort of a workflow. So we've got these alarms. Yeah, we'll replace this. And you're greeted with all the blue notes are the ones you can play. Alarm based sounds. We have alerts. Now, some of these sound like they'd be really good for tonal patches, right? So you actually have this stretch feature. So you pick one that you like. Maybe I want to play with that one. I'm going to hit stretch and it will restretch that one sample across the whole keyboard. So this is beautiful. This is something I'm beginning to see a little more frequently with, uh, with sample libraries and is a very welcome feature. I wish more orchestral based libraries would include stuff like this. So that is the really nifty stretch feature. Uh, while we're also here, you've got your ADSR, you've got the ability to reverse the sound. And so this is off quite a ways. You can actually adjust where it starts. If we just come over, let me grab it, thank you. And I'm on global mode right now. So it's actually changing all the playback heads. So if you wanna just adjust the one, you need to take global mode off. So I can adjust this one. Where do you want me to click? There we go. And you see all the others are left alone. Just this one is the one that's been changed back. So I'm gonna turn reverse on and then off again and reset this so as not to confuse myself. So be very aware if you're touching global mode, it can really uh, sort of mess with you. Uh, so that's reverse ADSR. You've got the ability to do some delay and we have some presets here. We could go for infinite infinity and beyond. We could bring some convolution up. This is a reverb. Versus just regular. We could also, you know, go to a different one, maybe river bath. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've also got a low cut. Of course, is just a filter and a high cut. 
Probably not the best example on these. And then at the top here, you have these two signal chains, which have been nicely put into just a single knob. So this is doing a whole bunch of stuff, compression, it's doing distortion, all kinds of cool things. So we'll go ahead, we'll turn this on. You get that really aggressive vibe. And then polisher, similar thing. This is with more of a mixing mastering kind of a focus. So it's a lot cleaner. So you could mess with those, see if you like the taste they bring to the table. And then finally you have a global pitch offset, which could be useful if you have a sample that's just gonna drone or something that's just going to hit once and you just need to move it a little bit up or down. And again, with global off, you could set these pitch offsets uh, per sample. So maybe you want one sample to be hitting the fifth, another one to hit the root note, or you're trying to just offset it so it matches. You can do that extremely easily. Let's, so that's pretty much the UI. I actually really like the UI. Extremely simple, really, really fast to work with, a single page. So welcome to have something a little more straightforward. There is uh, the LFO menus that I wanna point out here. I don't come in here very often, but they are here if you want to grab them. And uh, you can adjust the LFO triggers to move the filter for you, which is really nice. If you're gonna put modulators anywhere, filters are a good bet. So that's alerts. Let's go for atmospheres. Yeah, so there's a bunch in there. We've got some bowed symbols. Brahms. Next up, we've got our burst blast glitch. Drones. I really like the drones. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna use these a lot. <laughs> Anything that's got like good crackly textures is pretty high level of use for me, usually, and a lot of the things I do. They're just really great for setting a mood. That just drops. There's plenty more where all this comes from. So you already heard this one earlier. I used that one in this track. Harmonic designed textures. Entering the dreamscape. We have harmonic hits. Harmonic pass by. If you've ever made a short film, or you've done any work in film or gaming, these are just so useful. That's where they really shine. This is another one where the stretch parameter comes to mind. We have hit impacts. Yep, we'll replace this.
Larson Feedbacks. We've got our low hits. Memories. This is another one that I messed with quite a bit. I thought about putting it in here. I just didn't really find a spot for it. So I decided not to. Uh, by the way, you can also favorite sounds. Um, so if you have a sound that you really like, it'll turn red. And it makes it easy to remember it. If you have one that you use a lot, you're like, man, this is great. are the pings. I always think of anime with some of these sounds where they where they have this the shot of their face and then like the line shoots past the back of their head like what? That's uh what I think of when I hear these. These are the reverses. Of course you could reverse this way too. Now it'll play forwards. We grab this. Always Point makes me wait. Reverse a reverse. And up next, we've got risers. This is another one where it's easier to work with if you go into the browser, drag it in as audio. It's infinitely easier to sync it up than to try and do it with MIDI. Stingers. I really like the intro to that. Some sort of vocoded madness. Stutters. You just hear someone like, what was that? It's like dark and scary. These are our swells. You can hear some ghost movie or something with these. Some kind of a horror flick. These are vocal melodies. And so again, I'm not touching, there's no effects or nothing, just the sounds as they are. Vocal shouts, modern. Vocal sweeps. Man, there's a couple other libraries that come to mind that mixing these would probably be a, a really good idea. And finally, we've got whoosh transitions. So that's Trailer Expressions 3. I'm trying to put more emphasis these days on actually just playing through the sounds in the library to give you enough information to hopefully make your own informed opinion about it. I really like the simplicity of the UI. That's a big strong point for me. Uh, the other things that were strong points were the pass by sounds. I really like those, the hits and the atmospheres. There were a couple cool melodic things in there. there it, obviously, it's not a melodic focused library, but this stretch feature is really cool. And you can also do some fun things with some offset and turning on stretch and then moving it around that I was having fun with earlier. 
Uh, what do you like about this library and what do you not like about this library? Please drop that down in the comments. I'm very interested to know, especially as I'm getting back into sort of working and scripting and making my own instruments. So it's good to get feedback on this kind of a thing. There'll be a link at the end of the video to uh, Logitech's own videos where they show like tracks of it where it's in action and you can see their walkthrough, which is really well done, explains everything. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about this, feel free to also just drop that down below. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.